Uh, the guy who set it all up, uh, and the guy who sets up the internet for all of Hasgeek's events, and probably a lot more, is Kingsley. He is informally known as the god of internet, and he's going to do the next talk about what his perspective on JavaScript is. Also, his slides are online. If it does not work, it would be heights of irony. No, so no, there are no slides. So, uh, so this is a JavaScript developer conference. Can you hear me? Okay. So, I'd like to give a user perspective on JavaScript. Uh, if you value your privacy, the first thing you should do is disable JavaScript and avoid it at all costs. So I'll show you some demos and advantages of uh, avoiding JavaScript. So our famous newspaper, and so when you go there, you get a flash thing, then you get this, then you get ads on the side, and all kinds of stuff and okay now when you avoid JavaScript you can install an extension called no script which disables it and this is how it looks you go there you don't get the loading interstitial page you get this you get the headlines you get the stuff you need ads are all gone by default magically <laughs> there's no ad block or anything installed okay and uh, so you may say, okay, you know, that's a scummy site, but uh, uh, my site is really good. We make good sites. Sorry, we make good sites and you should trust us. So let's say the New York Times. Wow, this is a nice site, neatly designed. Everything looks good. But when you actually go there, uh, I don't know if you can see in the top corner, there's a small ghost icon. It's an extension ghost tree which says how many people are tracking you visiting New York Times. That's 12 trackers there. And if you dis because I have enabled JavaScript, the moment I disable it, I say forbid nyt.com and nytimes.com, and the number of trackers goes down to zero. So your privacy, the previous time, 13 companies got to know that I visited New York Times. Now there are zero people that know that I went to New York Times and read an article. And uh, this goes everywhere, even including sites like eBay, or uh, Flip so, Flipkart, or... So one of the things I really hate about eBay is that eBay is the biggest target for phishing scams, where people try to pretend that they're sending you an email from eBay and they want you to click on something. But when you go to eBay, they expect you to allow scripts from ebay.in, ebaystatic.com, ebayrtm.com. I have no idea what those things do. And in fact, if you go and log in, it asks you to allow from a few more domains which start with ebaysomething.com. So you don't know, as Akash was saying earlier, that you don't know what your framework does, what your JavaScript is doing. How do you know that those sites actually are owned by eBay? And Flipkart does something similar. Uh, they have a flipcart.com and they have something called flixcart.com. I would expect flixcart.com to sell me movies. But they want me to, I love JavaScript from that when I'm shopping over there. So I think as JavaScript developers, you should look at from the user's perspective and that they value their privacy. And you should, as you were saying about cross-site scripting and stuff, you should ensure that users don't have to trust anyone more than you to run your app. You can have the, and a lot of people say, oh, you know, my fancy app, my fancy API, just plug in a JavaScript on your site and make your site better. But you're actually making it worse for your users. Okay, I think I'm out of time. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>